Alright, so this would be part two of the video, just going through a few more examples. Um, again, I would actually try pausing this, see if you can solve for these, and watch through the solution to see if you've got them right. Um, or give a go watching through it to help learn that way, whatever works the best for you. So again, our first step here is choosing a formula, and it's important to decide whether you want to use sin or cosine. And you also have to memorize the basic formula. So, looking at this first example here, I go between a height of 9 and 2, but you'll notice I'm actually starting in the middle. And so that means I'm starting at the equilibrium. And so that would tell me that I'm going to use sin. And my equation then would be y is equal to a sin bx plus d. Again, you'll have to get that sorted in your head. Okay, next step for me, after looking at that information, is going to be finding the amplitude, and that can be found again from min minus max divided by 2. So again, the amplitude is the distance from that equilibrium line up, or from that equilibrium line down. Amplitude describes the total maximum displacement from the middle, and that's the important thing to remember there. So you can't just say, oh, my amplitude is 9. I have to figure out how far has it come up from the equilibrium. So that's why we do min minus max divided by 2. So a is equal to 9 minus 2 divided by 2. Uh, and that's going to give us 7 divided by 2, which is 3.5. Some amplitude is 3.5, 3.5. Finding d is the next thing for us, the actual shift up or down on what that midline is. So d. Again, we can use that as the max minus a, so 9 minus 3.5. And that takes us down to 5.5. So that tells me that my midline here is at 5.5. If I go 3.5 above, I hit 9. 3.5 below, I hit 2. Again, describing the amplitude there. Okay, our last piece is going to be finding the period, so we can solve for b in the equation. And the period can be sometimes a bit tricky. But uh, let's look at the information given to us. Here I'm starting at a time of, I would assume, 0. Up, down, up, and going around again. And that 5, that looks to me like it's supposed to match up with that point there. Now, one period, one complete cycle, means from where you start, which in this case is equilibrium, it's gone up, it's gone down, and it's gone back to the equilibrium. So it's looking to repeat its pattern. So that is the distance of one complete period. So there we don't have to do any maths. The period we can read directly from the graph is 5 seconds. That's one complete cycle from equilibrium up, down, and back to equilibrium again. So period is 5, and that tells us that we can solve for b, because that will be 2 pi divided by the period, which is 5. And I'm just going to leave it exactly like that as a fraction. 2 pi divided by 5. Now I've got all my information. Let's plug it in y is equal to a, which is 3.5, sin b, which is 2 pi over 5 times x, putting in the brackets, plus d, which is 5.5. So again, good idea to chuck brackets around that. Okay, on to the next example. Looking at this one, we have to pick our formula again, and I notice that it's not starting at the midline. I can see that midline is there. Things are going above and below that. But it's starting, in this case, at a minimum. So since it's starting at a min, I'm going to say that I need to use oh. negative cosine. So I'm going to use y is equal to negative a cos bx plus c because it's an upside down cosine if you want. It's starting at the bottom instead of starting at the top. Next bit for us, find the amplitude. Again, we can do that because the amplitude will be the distance from the midline. You'll notice here, and the midline is centered around the zero. So I'd expect that my amplitude here will actually be three. <coughs> so you could just say amplitude is three, or you can solve it using the formula if you're not comfortable with that. So max is three minus the min, which is negative three. 3 minus a minus 3 is 6, divided by 2 gets you 3. So indeed, like we said, the amplitude there is 3. Going from the equilibrium to the max is 3, and same 
from the equilibrium or the midline down to the min is also 3. Okay. Um, finding D, that's going to be our midline. Again, here you can actually see that it should be at 0 because it's centered there, but 3 minus 3, that's the max minus the amplitude, gives us 0. So we do see that D is in fact 0. And one last piece, finding the period, identifying what that's going to be. Well, we've been given heaps of information, except for exactly what the period is, because if you look through, if I want to go one complete cycle, going from my min through to equilibrium up to my max and back to my min again, that's, oops, that's one period right there. Going from my min back to my min again, that's another period, a complete cycle. The complete cosine has happened there. I've gone through a full cycle from min to max and back to min again. So you'll notice it takes nine seconds to complete two periods. So if I'm going to calculate that out, the time taken, sorry, the number of periods, which is two periods, divided by nine seconds, Ah, oh, I've got it upside down again. Other way around. We're looking for the time. So we need nine seconds. It takes to complete two periods. So one period then should take 4.5 seconds, half that time. In nine seconds I can do two, so at 4.5, half that time I should be able to do one. So B then is going to become um, 2 pi divided by 4.5. And if you want to simplify that out using um, magical fraction knowledge, you can get 4 pi over 9 for that. Both will probably get get pi okay with, though. So, plugging it in, y is equal to, again, I was using a negative cosine here, so a negative, my amplitude is 3, cos, bracket, my b is 4 pi divided by 9, x, bracket, and I don't need to do a plus zero because, well, that doesn't really add anything to our knowledge about this equation. So again, starting in a min, I see that it's a cosine and it's actually a negative, so just be careful that you get that negative there. I have one more example to look at. Um, let me bring it up a little bit so we've got room to work on it. And this one takes us to a little bit of an application, which is a little bit more of what you'd see at an excellence level. So, let's take a look. Find the formula, our first step. Okay, well, I can see that my max is 80 and my min is 30. So my amplitude is going to be 80 minus 30 equals 50. My midline is going to be the max minus the amplitude. Oh, sorry, divide by 2. It's 25. <laughs> It wasn't working. Okay, so my amplitude is 25, so 80 minus 25 is going to be 55. So I know that my midline here should be at 55. I'm going 25 above, 25 below. And the next thing then would be trying to find our period. So looking at this, again looking for complete cycles. I'm starting at the equilibrium, I'm going up that's not a complete period because I haven't started at equilibrium and went up. I need this case to be going down at the equilibrium, so I need to go back again until I'm actually going up through the equilibrium. So up through the equilibrium until I'm going up through the equilibrium. This is the distance of one period. Again, carrying on, that's another one full period. And again, carrying on, that's another one full period. So in this case, there's a total of three periods in the time of seven seconds. So seven seconds split up amongst the three periods um, is going to get us the answer there. And you can probably just leave it as seven thirds instead of turning it into a decimal because that'll bother us later. Our b is then going to be equal to two pi divided by seven thirds. Okay. If you do want some 
tutorial on fractions, that's really 2 pi over 1 divided by 7 over 3. So to divide fractions, you flip and multiply. So that becomes 2 pi over 1 times 3 over 7. 6 pi over 7. So that becomes your answer. Again, just leave the pi in there. So we know a, d, and b. Let's write out our equation. y is equal to... Oh, I forgot to mention that. Are we going to use sin or cos here? Starting at equilibrium and going up, that means that I've got a positive sin. So it's 25 sin bracket 6 pi over 7 x bracket plus 55. Okay. Next question. For how long in each cycle is it below 70 meters? So what they're asking us to look for here, if I imagine where 70 might be, I need to try to find how many seconds is it below the height of 70 meters for that seven periods, seven second period, I should say. So in the seven seconds shown, for how much of that time is it actually below 70 meters? Okay, so 70 meters, is that your y or is that your x? And you'll notice that 70 meters is actually your y, that's the height. So 70 meters is equal to y, we know something. We know what y is going to be. So our next step is going to be getting our um, calculator so that we can actually solve for this. But let's show what we're going to solve for, right? You want to show your substitution every time. So if y is equal to 70, we have 2 pi, sorry, 25 sin 6 pi over 7 x bracket plus 55. That's the equation we want to solve. And if you look, you should notice that there's actually going to be more than one solution because how many times is that equation equal to 70? You see it in there a bunch of times. So we should get quite a few solutions. Now that one's going to be after the 7 seconds, so we won't count it. But the best way to do this is not using solver, but actually using gsolve. So let's get our calculators out. And we want to go into graph so that we can use gsolve. And we're going to plug in exactly what we see here, which is um, not 70, but using our formula 25 sin bracket 6 shift pi divided by 7 times x bracket plus 55. And we need to be able to put in our window appropriately too, so might just use the information oops. Might just use the information we've got. If you look at the scale given to us, we need to go from basically from I don't know, zero to eighty-five in y and from zero to at least seven. So from zero to seven scale of one. And my y min needs to be at, let's say, 29, just so we can see above it, and put it up to 81, go slightly over it. Now if we draw it, we should be able to see it just like we do in the problem. All right, looks very similar. So we're in the right track, and we want to try to find, again, where the graph actually equals 70 all the way across. So in this case, you've been given a y value and you're looking for x, so you will use gsolve. And we are going to go into gsolve, and we've got xcalc here, which is what we're looking for. We're looking for x, and we're going to enter in the y value of 70. And you'll notice, let's just zoom out a little bit so we can see that better. Try again. Change our window. Let's go... 90, just so it's not cut off. Okay, so into gsolve, we're looking for an x value, so we'll use xcalc. We know y is 70. We'll put that in. And we can see here that we've got some values. So if you use the arrow, you can bounce over and you see that every single time that is equal to 70, you find it. And it will give you the information. So let's write down what those numbers actually are. And we can call them, I don't know, 
since there's multiple solutions, we'll say x1, and we'll round 0 0.239, looking at the next one, x2, 0 0.928, looking at the next one, 2.57, Um, 3.26 Scroll down here. I'm running out of room. It's okay. 4.90 I guess that should be 4.91 And we'll call this x6, the last one is going to be occurring at 5.59. So 5.59. So those are all the values of x where your equation is equal to 70. Now another way to f solve that out actually, if you go backwards, that's the first equation we've put in. We can put in a second one. What would be the equation of that horizontal line? That would be y is equal to 70. So you can literally type in y is equal to 70, draw it, and there you can see that's the line of 70 going all the way across and if we want to solve using that we'll use this button called intersection and that will find out where the two points actually intersect between the two graphs so there's one two three four five and six again either way will work for you you still get the same numbers and so that will get you um, the values for x but we actually need to answer the question appropriately they're asking for how many seconds of time is it actually under 70 meters. So they want to know how many seconds is it above, really, and how many seconds is it below out of the total of seven. So one way to go about doing that would be to possibly look um, at being clever. Let's figure out for just one cycle. We know that one cycle is going to be um, seven thirds of a second, and so let's look for out of one cycle what period of time is it not below so we'll go see if I can do this there we go we will go um, find the time period here on this first one here x1 to x2 so x2 minus x1 0 0.928 minus 0 0.3 239. You can use your calculator for that if you want. 0.928 minus 0.239. And you've got a total time of 0 0.689 seconds that it's above 70. So that's for each cycle how long it's above. And we had a total of three cycles that we went through. So I would go 3 times 0 0.689 times by 3, and you'll get 2.067. So again, that's above, and we want to know how long it was below. So that would mean then, you do 7 seconds minus the 2.067 that it's above, so 7 minus answer 4.933 seconds it is below 7 d meters so those are some of the ways that they might ask trickier questions and you've got to try to figure out you know what's going on with that but um Again, to solve for particular x and y values on your cosine graphs, it's really good to use G-solve to put it in there so you can see all the possible solutions and match your window, like we did, so that it looks just like the problem you've been given. Okay, those are the excellent level questions. Be brave, go out and try them, see if you can figure them out from the word problems, and good luck!